Okay. Welcome to the Global Education System for Regeneration or the Education Hive and um, session for the Bioregional Regeneration Summit. We want to welcome uh, Edward Mueller today, this afternoon, night, and morning. Um, so welcome, Edward, to, to you. share your wisdom. Yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> your um, work. Well, for those who don't know me, uh, I'm based in Costa Rica. I am the founder and the president of the University for International Cooperation uh, since 28 years ago. And we've been working on regeneration for about 12 years now. And um, we also started in 2018 an initiative called Costa Rica Regenerativa, which was to apply different strategies in regeneration and actually make them happen, action, uh, to prove that regeneration can happen. Uh, together with me in today's session, we have Hugo Araujo. Hugo is a close friend. We've been working for some time together. He is the founder of Seven Vortex. Maybe he'll say a few more words about himself uh, when, he, when he speaks. Hugo um, has developed the uh, let's say the backbone and, and, the, and the interface for this hive in education. Uh, we've done several rounds with it. We did one for the Re Global Regeneration Corps uh, with Ubiquity University um, about a year ago, I think. Uh, and it's a process in evolution. So let's say we have now a beta version, 1.0, that uh, we still need to develop quite a, quite a bit, but I just wanted to give you the why and the how we're thinking about this. And then we have uh, also Franz. Uh, Franz, maybe you can pin him and he can turn on his camera. Uh, Franz Josef Almayer, there he is. He is with Seeds and Haifa. So the cryptocurrency Seeds, they have been working on development of DAOs and blockchain and, well, the, the, the cryptocurrency for regeneration. And um, the university was the first university to sign up with seeds back, I don't know, three or four years ago. Um, and we've been working, we actually are receiving payment in seeds for students that don't have a credit card or don't have the money for it. So uh, seeds has given a, a few scholarships for especially African students, but also for Latin American students. And we're gonna be working together on this uh, platform development. So, because we want to bring in um, also SEED's background for scholarships and join uh, in the efforts with the blockchain and um, the, the whole system so it can be really opened up to a global level. So. The idea of having a knowledge network and a place where you can go and learn about regeneration is because there's probably, I'd say now we're quite a bit ahead. When I started working in regeneration in 2008, 2009, people didn't even know what it meant. They might not still know what it means, but they had never heard it. Uh, then in 20, 11, 2012, um, there was a lot of criticism. Oh yeah, a new buzzword. Uh, it's just not gonna change anything. But now I think slowly and but surely people are understanding that we do need to go beyond sustainability and regenerate the planet to be able to actually achieve sustainability in the future. So we can see um more and more resources are becoming available for, for regeneration more and more companies are talking about regeneration even walmart says it's a regenerative corporation now um but what we're seeing in, in practice is we're not really um having the people if we want to regenerate we don't have uh where to hire people in in regeneration so we decided to come together and build uh, a platform 
where students can then design their own learning pathway. I'll show a few slides just to, to clarify a few things. But the idea is to have it open. So it's not only going to be uh, UCI professors and, and, and partners, but we want it to be open for anybody that wants to give courses in regeneration can actually become part of the platform. There's another component, which Hugo will mention a bit more further about establishing uh, networks of collaboration. So one of the things that we have in social networks is there is no placement. You can't really contact people. They want you to keep the contact through the platform. So the seven vortex methodology and the, and the tools that Uber has developed actually allows it to be a, a graphic LinkedIn where you can actually contact the people. And then it will also guide you to see who else is working, be it in a bioregion or in a country, who else is working on the same subjects. So if I'm going to work with um, regenerative tourism, I can just uh, look in uh, this network and see, oh, look, how interesting. This person in Mexico, this person in Brazil, this person in Peru are working. And you can contact them and set up working groups. So this is will be a very dynamic process. We're going to go co-creating solutions together. And one of the things that was uh, one of the reasons for, for pushing RCN, the Regenerative Community Network, and we launched it in October 2018, just uh, three or four months after having launched Costa Rica Regenerativa. And Costa Rica Regenerativa, we launched with the participation of John Fullerton from Capital Institute, Stuart was also working in Capital Institute at the time. Uh, we had Hunter Lovins, we had a Savory Institute, we had a Gaia Foundation, a lot of people. And then it was always the question, how can we actually accelerate regeneration? How can we bring this to scale? We really need to rush. We're, we're, the sand is running out on the top of the sand clock. Uh, our times are, are accelerating. And we need to find solutions now in regeneration. We need to apply regeneration and it has to be large scale. And if we go the traditional walkways, we will never make it. We'll, we'll be too late by the time we have something set up that really can accelerate regeneration. So let me just share a few slides on, on the screen. Um, yeah, I think this is it. Hope it's the correct one. The other day I gave a whole talk with the wrong uh, PowerPoint. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, so these are these are the main challenges, according to the um, Stockholm Resilience Center that we have as as humans. And we know uh, this; it's not new. We know that green water, which is rainwater, this is actually new, newly updated. The data. Uh, it's, it's going to kick us out of the planet. Biodiversity loss is probably the most critical one. Fertilizer use, uh, chemical and plastic, which are novel entities. And if you look at climate change, it's still, it's not, I'm not saying it's not important, but it's still uh, in a less risk area, lower risk area than biodiversity loss, for example. So sometimes when we talk about regeneration, where do we start? And what do we focus on? How do we prioritize regeneration? If you want to regenerate a bioregion, uh, where should we start? And I see a lot of uh, initiatives, for example, in uh, discussing only climate change and then finding solutions like electric cars uh, to correct climate change. And uh, biodiversity is not there, fertilizer is not there. And actually, if we look at this and there was a, a study published in 2017 by Campbell and, and his group that said agriculture was responsible for 80% of global changes. So the Anthropocene is basically caused by the way we produce food. So in our case in Costa Rica, we have prioritized the food production, but at the same time, it's the highest potential for fighting climate change. Because if we can pull carbon from the sky and put it beneath our feet into the soil, that will be the quickest way to reverse at least the CO2 emissions and bring down the temperature and basically gain us time to avoid catastrophe and get humanity to change and get technology to catch up and so on. 
So this is just an introduction of what areas we should be looking at to train people, to educate students, to, to coach them, uh, to set up collaborative programs. We need to identify which are the acupuncture points we should be concentrating on that are low hanging fruit. I mean, if you think of it, we, we could get rid of fertilizers in one day if we had a strong enough power and legislation, legislative, legislative uh, capacity. Um, but the other way is proving that we can produce better food, more quantity, more profitable without the use of fertilizers and then just convince farmers to move away from fertilizers. And that would avoid one of our biggest problems today uh, with planetary collapse. So there are different areas that we can work on uh, to try to prioritize. A second uh, more data than in the history of our of humanity. Um, Melina, let me know. It says my internet connection is unstable. So in case you start hearing that I get cut off, so I can slow down. Yeah, you um, you got caught a little bit, but but you came back very okay. pretty soon. Yeah, I'm in a barred house in a barred place. <laughs> um, so we have so much knowledge, but we have forgotten to transform it into wisdom. I mentioned this the first day. And then I think we're stuck without being able to put action into wisdom. So we really need to rethink how we're educating. I think a lot of university programs are still preparing students and professionals for last century, for problems we, we never solved and we won't solve and are not <clears throat> really critical today. And, and very few uh, educational institutions are actually preparing these young people and even older people for the challenges we are, uh, that are already with us. Uh, I mean, we are now already in planetary collapse. We are in the Anthropocene, all the science is there. We're gonna go extinct if we don't change and we don't have too much time to change. So how do we accelerate this process? And if you think of the way we educate in universities and some programs are a lot better than others and some universities are really good, some are not that good. But um, the part of the spiritual component, the mindfulness component, the working and thinking with common sense. A lot of the modern programs, which I even uh, was involved in, in science, for example, they rely basically completely on a statistical analysis. And I was lucky enough to do my, my doctorate in Germany many, many years ago. And the first thing my professor said, use your common sense and then look at the statistics. Um, but a lot of programs are now based solely on analysis and data analysis. And what is the problem? We are not looking at things holistically. So by looking at them in a fraction, in a, in a fractioned way, in a disciplinary approach, we're losing information, which a statistical analysis might give a, a significance to, but in reality, it might not be significant because the interactions are actually more important. So in the Western world, we, we took a system apart and we started studying their components. And these components are studied in different departments, uh, in different ministries, and we forgot about the interactions. So how do we actually get to this um, time in, in knowledge where we start looking really into systems? I started working with systems back in 19... 80 with Robert Hart. Um, and we couldn't even get support to buy a computer because they said we were doing crazy stuff. And there's so many good examples of system thinking and so on, but the academic programs are still not holistic. So we have these big challenges and I already mentioned them the other day, so I'm gonna go very quickly. We need to realize that we are nature. We are not out of nature, so we really cannot think we're the owners of nature to do whatever we want to do with them. We need to move away from this reductionist world as soon as possible. I mean, the one hypothesis and look for one answer, that is wrong. 
uh, we get detached solutions like the decarbonization strategy for Costa Rica is based on electric mobility. And we have so many good solutions for climate change and global warming, which is the main issue for the government, uh, that are not included. And electric cars won't solve our problems. And we still have uh, in the COP uh, the results that we need to get rid of all cattle in the world. And there's bad cattle, there's good cattle. As, as Alan Savory says, it's not the cow, it's the how. And we have actually good solutions when we work with ecosystems that contain cattle because they were the ones that fixed the carbon <coughs> into the soil in the first place in the evolution of the, of the planet. And we can actually use that ecosystem to draw down enough carbon. If we did it massively, we could reduce uh, and eliminate climate change, go back to pre-industrial levels before 2050, way before 2050. And even Ratan Lal has, has published this, at, that by the end of the century, we would be uh, reducing 156 parts per million of CO2 just by managing soil. The other thing is we're not trained to think exponentially. So if we do an educational program, we have to get the, the students to understand exponential changes. So things are changing exponentially and we're thinking in a linear fashion. So we think we have more time than we really do. And biodiversity loss is, is exponential. The technology development is exponential. Another issue is how do we get away from accepting methods that are wrong? I mean, the green, green revolution, we know it's wrong. Donella Meadows said it many, many decades ago. Why are we still thinking and believing in it? How do these companies lobby and lobby universities into defending these processes that are killing planet? And GDP, for example, we know it's, it doesn't really measure development, but we're still using them. And I think the biggest challenge is unlearning. So we really need to allow students to look for a pathway that will allow them to unlearn. And it's actually a lot easier to work with younger students that don't have um, a strong university program behind them because they have less to unlearn. Um, so. It, this is a very interesting question. I know it, it, it generates um, discussion and I'd love to have discussions about this at the end. So when we look at what our educational system is up to right now, it's not fit for purpose and we need to really rethink education. And I think it's something that's very clear. And that is the reason why I founded the university in, back in 1994, which was originally to implement sustainable development in 2016, we moved the whole university into a process of regeneration. So we're actually probably the, the first university to be totally in regeneration at the global level. So our concept is bringing together these six dimensions where we have Mother Earth at the bottom, which is the basis. It's the roots. It's the food. It's, it's the energy that, that allows us to live. It's ecosystem services, biodiversity. And then on the other side of the toroid, uh, is is that spiritual dimension, which is not religious, which is left out of many academic programs. So I'm bringing this here because we need to work with mindfulness, with compassion, with ethics, with values, with the Earth Charter, um, any of these instruments to really bring our students to rethink the purpose of life, rethink consumption, and rethink their 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 wishes for the future. I mean, you look at Singapore as being mentioned as, as a model city for the world. Well, the ecological footprint of Singapore is 13,000% higher than its biocapacity. So it's not a model for development. So we have to really rethink what we're doing. Universities don't really go into politics unless it's the political science uh, people in the university. But uh, if we don't get young people to be active in policy making, in politics, in local government, in ministries, it will be very slow to change because older people will have more trouble changing. And we're seeing things like in the, the, the young president in Chile really starting to change things. So we, we need to get them back uh, involved in, in, in politics. I grew up in Latin America. And in my generation and, and the pre and the generation before me, most students were activists. 
and today students are very passive. Culture is, is fundamental. We need to develop strong processes in cultural education. Culture is what glues a society together, a community together. It's what makes me different than Chinese or Japanese or, or Germans. And, and culture has been washed out uh, almost completely by, by social networks and so on. So um, how do we actually get all this together in a holistic process, in a training program? So these are some of the challenges that we're facing to be able to have the students develop a path and then be able to reinvent ourselves going from the ego status, the ego economy, the ego society in transition through the eco and where humanity is in service of life. So this is our end goal, get our students to understand that we have to use our knowledge, our wisdom, our technology to be in, in favor. And it won't happen at once. So we, we also support a lot of our thought process on the three horizons. So we look, need to look at the current horizon, the business as usual, which is losing its fit for purpose. What is well, worthwhile conserving from that? And what do we have to get rid of? And how do we push a whole society, a global society, to a, three, a third horizon of regeneration? So it will happen in, in many different gradients. It's not something where there's a threshold. We had a discussion on Monday, and one of the uh, listeners was saying, no, regeneration is a threshold. It's a yes or no. It's a point. We need to define exactly where that is. I don't agree. It's going to be a moving uh, process as we go along. And I always mention Bucky Fuller, let's not fight the system. Let's build a new one that will make the old and obsolete. So there's where we are. We have lots of instruments. I'm not going to go into detail here. I use a donut for Costa Rica because I know where we are exceeded at the planetary boundaries and which are the big gaps in our social threshold. So I can actually design uh, processes to correct this and revert the damage done and bring society to a inclusive process and move into a perfect donut, say, in the future. We have, just to mention one of the lines, uh, in economy, regenerative economy, we have a lot of organizations that are, are doing a lot of work. SEEDS is one of them. Wellbeing Economy Alliance, uh, I'm on their global council. We actually had a very interesting meeting uh, today, and it's actually gaining power. Wellbeing Economy Alliance is gaining power. Um, during COVID, we set up the Bounce Beyond, so a whole process to facilitate uh, the new economies. We have John with his eight principles of re regenerative economy. We have Christian Felber with economy of the common good and, and his common good matrix and a lot of other tools. And we have seeds, uh, which uh, uh, France can tell us a bit more about it. So this is just to give you a very short look at in one of the areas in the economy, we have so many different new ways of looking at economy. We need to be able to be flexible, and this is not teaching recipes. So we have to get into principles, and a lot of these processes are still in co-creation. So it's not educating as we used to with a teacher that knows everything and tells the students to memorize it. This is where the students participate in a co-creational process. That's one of the things we're looking at. So we've, we've launched a lot of uh, programs in regeneration over the last years. With Ubiquity University, we launched a Master in Regenerative Action. We have the Certificate in Regenerative Entrepreneurship, which is now in the second cohort. We have Melina with her biomimicry courses. Uh, but this is all thrown around all over the world. So what we're trying to do is put them into a portal that is easily accessible, where a lot of people from around the world can actually upload courses and students from all around the world can participate in this co-creative learning. And then the RCN comes in because these are sites where we go and practice regeneration. So we can have a theoretical program in the cloud, multi-stakeholder, and we land students. Students can choose, where do I want to go around the planet? And through the Vortex system, you have your network and you can actually see, oh, I'd love to go and see the Amazon and work in the Amazon and regeneration. So you look up through the, the, the network and you know who is working in what aspects of regeneration in the Amazon. You can actually contact them and say, look, I'm in this learning process. I'd love to go and practice regeneration. And one thing that we wanted to do with Global Regeneration Corps was having the funding for students to actually be able to do this. 
So um, this will be in a blockchain type of passport. We're not looking at degrees hanging on the wall. It will be linked to a certification process. So if a student designs his pathway through this, and we're going to see this with Ugo in a moment, you can actually get a certificate in, I am well-trained. I'm a regenerator 1.0. I'm a regenerator 3.0, which trains other regenerators in regenerative tourism. And this is my track record. In this passport is my network. In this passport are my achievements. So it's more than a, a, a piece of paper hanging on the wall. It's actually your history uh, available to anybody who wants to involve you. So this is what the Global Regeneration Corps, we, we started with Ubiquity. We're moving a lot of this into the network that Hugo's gonna talk about. So I have my, my networks there. I, I have my profile and I can actually start working in the knowledge process, sharing knowledge. So I'm gonna skip this drawing, but this is kind of like what it means, what it looks like uh, to get a learning pathway. So I'll pass it on to you, Ugo. Uh, if there are questions, Melina, I'm not looking at the chat. Don't um, worry, I'm there. Yeah, I can look at it while, while Ugo talks. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Edward. And hi, friends, how are you? Thank you for being around. Um, well, my name is Ugo Araujo and I'm the co-founder of the co-creator of uh, Seven Vortex. And with Seven Vortex, we have been partnering with the UCI already for a few years. And we've been working also together, trying to find collaboration opportunities with SITS, and uh, now like getting deeper with HIFA as well. And our, our mission is really to create this digital mycelium that could bring all regeneration movement uh, together. And that can also connect knowledge around nature uh, for humanity. So we have different kinds of uh, platforms and, and setups, but today um, I'm going to talk more about the uh, educational hive. So um, uh, for everyone, this is the, the website, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it on my own. Just please be patient. So as we could see, Edward was talking about how the UCI has been working with re regeneration and bringing these big challenges uh, on, on the table, like uh, the acceptance, the ecosystemic education, how can we be part of nature again? And this is uh, coming all together into this idea of unlearn. So unlearn to be again in uh, part of the world through this spirituality, economy, society, mother earth, culture, and politics. So I think what we need to know is that uh, like, people like Edward or like other people that I've been working with uh, from uh, like many times and, and a long time ago now, like more than 15 years, they all have um, uh, something to share. And the same happens for the local people in the, in the indigenous towns. So you have always someone that knows something that is very important that you need to know about the land or about the weather. So our biggest challenge was how to improve the educational, the knowledge transfer, and how to bring these uh, peer-to-peer -peer exchanges into life. So for doing this, we have created uh, regenera.cr. When you come here, the first part, we'll, we'll talk about uh, just if you want to add an idea. So what's your uh, regenerative idea in this case? So this is uh, completely for free and this is just for fun. Like you bring an idea here and you ask for uh, a picture or a title, a description. You can put a, a PDF in case that you have like more backup for your idea. And there are different kinds of ideas. So in this case, we'll see one idea here, another one. And this is just a starting, but everyone can add an idea without being uh, asked anything in exchange. Then if you want to be part of the community, and this is the, the main idea of this website, how to bring together the community around UCI, but also around regeneration. Then we have a, a login um, portal. So once that we get into this portal, we will see this uh, hive mind, which is the, the, the gallery of different people. Now it's a testing part, but it, this is a real gallery of content that the UCI is gonna put together. So UCI is very well known because he's giving voice to uh, regeneration global leaders and, and new initiatives. And it is not new, but it happened for many years. So I'm gonna show you just how it looks my and then the, the idea here will be to be able to deliver a content that is uh, 
uh, in a seven minute format with seven uh, videos of one minute each. So we have the introduction, topic one, two, three, four, five, and six, and we can see them one or all together. So it's up to everyone to, to upload the, the content and I, I will show you just one minute of one. Okay, so now I'm gonna close this window and I will go back. This is this will be my hive and, and this is the QR code for you if you want to see it or, or this is the link if you want to, to watch it, one video or all, all the videos again. So the idea here will be to empower uh, everyone as, as starting with the staff of the UCI and the, the content that they want to share to create these uh, possibilities of uh, exchanges. So how can we create these peer-to-peer -peer exchanges? Now you have the, the Hive also in your in your chat. So you can come here and as, as more Hives you put, are, as uh, the topics will be linked. So for example, I put the one of the of the Hive in the topic of impact, impact room. So if there is another one with impact, we will see how it unfolds. And the same will be for um, creating my own Hive. Like for example, you can come to this hexagon and then here you upload the video, you upload a picture. And now I have, for example, 15 uh, views. This is very basic, but this is what we have right now. And then we go to the collaboration opportunities. So in the collaboration opportunities part, you will be able to put your own um, profile. Let's come to the collaboration. And then you will have six different questions. So in these questions, they will ask you, what is your project or initiative that you're working for, uh, the opportunities. And then you will be answering some of the questions here. And you will be uh, having a fractal voice in this profile uh, matching system. So when you go to the ecosystem, you will see who is also working, for example, in uh, with the University for International Collaboration. Cooperation, so so um, this is this is how it looks like. If we go to one that is already populated, like uh, for example, the CHI for uh, solutions, this is how it looks like when people are getting to participate. So you have, again, your, your, uh, your signing process, but then you come here and you see, for example, for, uh, wait. sorry, I think maybe the internet. Well, that always happens. We can go to the GRC as well. So this is the first version of the one that uh, we're talking about, the GRC. And, and here we can see uh, like different kinds of people that have been logging in. Would you will check it out? Oh. Not available. <laughs> yeah, but I think this is because of my internet. Yeah. Like it's, it's okay. Well, let's just stay here then. And so here you can see all the connections, and and then you will see also who is there and where. So, for example, in this case, we have some people that is working here, and and then I can see who is around there, and if it's uh, someone that it is uh, interesting to me, I can see the hive that that in this case Tanya has. And I think this is a great opportunity to to um, to see and to seek a uh, collaboration of so the origin of of this part comes also because we wanted to create this um, flow of resources in between uh, peers and using for example this idea of how to uh, to cross pollinate knowledge between locals if there is someone that knows how to harvest something or how to plant something 
then how to uh, give them a voice like the TED talk, but in, in a format that is just really smaller and more dynamic. And the bigger idea here was to, to have um, uh, like an, an initial idea on, on buy me a coffee, buy me a lunch or surprise me. And then also getting into, into um, blockchain and smart contracts by letting everyone to choose where this money goes and uh, putting some money back into the platform. So these numbers are not final, but this is where seeds I think comes to, uh, to, to the game because what we're trying to develop here will happen just if we were able to collaborate. And this is, this is also the message that we want to uh, communicate here that all this part it is not just about having a good idea and trying to, to create it on your own, but it's how to collaborate in between different parties that are having different agendas, but that we are able to actually align ourselves for a bigger good that in this case is the regeneration of the planet. So how can we create a, a safe space for, for um, initiatives to be seen, but also um, a, a place where collaboration opportunities could arise through technology? So I don't know if you want to jump here, Franz, please, and, and just join how uh, the possibilities with SEEDS will actually be able to uh, let us co-evolve with this initiative. Sure, yeah. Thanks, Hugo, and thank you, Edward. And hi, everybody. Um, good to be here sharing this space. Uh, my name is Franz. Uh, also have had the pleasure to be working with Edward for quite some time now, as he mentioned, the first university to accept uh, seeds, the regenerative currency. It's already something very historical that we've worked uh, since and also with Ugo more recently with Seven Vortex and really figuring out how, as Ugo was saying, how can we create this collaboratory of merging together all of these different pieces of the grand puzzle that together allow us to create essentially this regenerative future. Uh, for me, from my perspective, checking in from Guatemala, I am a co-founder of Haifa and Seeds and other regenerative ventures in that space. And what we've been really uh, figuring out in these last years is, you know, how do we measure value and how do you measure capital? And as Edward has, has been saying in his presentation, you know, currently right now, all of these things that we really value in terms of regeneration and and nurturing life are in a market failure. And obviously education is one of those. It's a market failure where essentially education has been distorted to essentially fit the narrative of consumption. Um, in that sense, also that's where sort of our values our educational values are going towards. And the question that we've been asking is how can we really restore those different values and modalities that have been eroded through the essentially the, this takeover of of values and what we found in this journey is really the, the monetary aspect, the, the way that we give money or we shape money and we give that power to money is what's essentially taking over a lot of that. So that's what we set out to do to sort of re holistically redimension the whole aspect of value. And that's where we created seeds. So it's essentially a third horizon DAO and by DAO, I mean a decentralized autonomous organization, which allows us to really collaborate across scale. And we've been experimenting in terms of the applications of how to restore these instances. And in education, uh, UCI is the biggest, best example. One of the things, just to give you guys a glimpse of the things that we're working with is, for example, setting up a DAO structure for the masters in regenerative entrepreneurship a program that Edward and his team have created. So the idea there, imagine if today, it's pretty obscene, but education today works in which you pay a lot of money to our organization to provide you for the wisdom. And at the end of that process, you essentially receive a document which says you've participated in, and you're supposed to be able to go into the market and get a job based on that. The reality today is most People are not even getting a job, even in the debt-based marketplace. And there's a new need and the, all the things that we value are completely being ignored. So the question is how can we connect the things that we really value into a whole systems economy and allow the interconnection of all of this, give value to regenerative education and also shape that market, really measuring the demand for regeneration 
and supplying that with the workforce, with the people, and now having essentially a token economy that can give value to this. So in the new frameworks that we're imagining is, for example, you're able to, as a student, pay your tuition and have a portion of that tuition be going into a common treasury where all the students are essentially co-members of that DAO. At the same time, you can have that the lecturers, the professors, the faculty of the university are also members of that DAO, of that organization that are also managing that treasury. And what we're also doing, what Edward briefly mentioned is that okay, once you pass on and receive that education, you can receive a smart badge that really qualifies you in a public ledger uh, that kind of gathers all your merits that you've accomplished and, and showcase that you're able to, to exchange that knowledge and contribute with your knowledge in the different uh, digital work fields. Um, and what matters in there is that essentially now students are co-invested with lecturers and are co-invested in each other's success. So that means that the relation goes beyond the university and it can continue as an enterprise, as a living, breathing enterprise that continues to create regenerative impact. Let me show you a little bit of what we've been doing in terms of that. If you see this, this is uh, live right now. You can go to dao.hifa.earth and you see the different organizations that are already organizing themselves in terms of decentralized governance and in terms of decentralized value uh, contribution and accounting. So here you see all of these different organizations that have shared purpose that are accounting their contributions in different ways and also governing that. So you can imagine, as you can see, as Edward and Ugo were saying, you can have now the members which are organizing, for example, with tools such as the Hive in order to account for those layers and allow people to find each other in terms of contribution. And you can even actually work for multiple entities and one of the exciting layers that we're building right now is essentially a DAO per bioregion of the earth. So if you imagine ourselves as a bioregional entity in which there are multiple organizations working towards shared purpose, we can overlay one of these DAO tools that have a integral accounting framework that is completely open, transparent, and at the same time immutable. And you can actually cluster the different organizations working toward that same common goal and create roles. So what we're also doing is creating multidisciplinary uh, processes where the multiple entities sort of share, have a shared vision of the bioregional development in which we can codify roles. And these roles that are codified can be applied on the DAO. And what we really need is this education layer, which the UCI is providing where now for example, people can say, yes, I wanna engage in the regenerative economy, but how do I do that? So what we can do now is really uh, implement this transition of micro learnings that uh, Edward and Hugo are proposing into a full-fledged economy, where now, for example, people can be rewarded for participating in this educational process and be automatically linked to the organizations that are providing the solutions on the ground and as you are aggregating all of this together, you're actually birthing new regenerative economies in which each of the people contributing towards are, become shareholders and also have voice in the governance of it. So that means that we're really working towards starting layers where, for example, we can have this referendums that go across the bioregion where more and more people can align around shared purpose and more and more people can find around each other all on on a blockchain layer. And this is really uh, up to the point because what we're looking for is market-based solutions that also are able to outcompete the system in its own game by simply aligning and uh, restructuring this multi-dimensional side of, of capital where now we can give value to regenerative education. We can give value to regenerative uh, capital in its multiple dimensions. And just to go back to the to the Haifa DAO platform. Here you can see, for example, how, oh, one second, internet slow, where it's all about um, proposals. So that means anyone on the ground can suggest a proposal in terms of what needs to be done in the community. And 
if there is enough buying from the community, then people are able to provide contributions and be remunerated by those contributions. And if you zoom out for a second, what we're actually creating here is a, a vehicle for collaborative impact investment, where now we can measure in real time what these value flows that are being exchanged and have, for example, impact investors provide collateral around the different economies that are being shaped. So it's also one of the things that we're working uh, along with Edward and Hugo to build this framework of essentially social technological stacks of creating regenerative solutions on the ground and all the different layers to get people to actually contribute on the ground and create the change that we want to see. Thank you, Franz. Um, Melina, well, we've been talking about uh, radical collaboration, right? And, and this is what it's all about. It's not easy, it's not evident, it is not always um, like relevant for some other actors, but for us, we know that we have uh, complementary layers for, for each other. And as we have learned in, in terms of evolutionary pathways, as you taught us, uh, one, one moment in our time, like uh, organisms were uh, unicellular. And then they merge into a multicellular superorganism to create almost this exoskeleton to try to fulfill different functions. So I think this is where we are uh, in terms of uh, technological layers. And I don't know if there are some uh, other questions or like the, the idea was for us to present for these 15 minutes and then, and then to have some feedback and conversation with the rest of the audience. We're all open. If anybody wants to say anything, just open your mic. Oh, oh hi. this is. Oh. Can you raise oh, your yeah, hand you so we will okay. see? Uh, yeah, this is Jesse. Uh, uh, an impressive combination of, of uh, well thought out things. Um, going from, you know, a, um, local um, learning about how to live well uh, within uh, your limits to uh, designing a system that'll outperform the, the current threat. <laughs> uh, it, it, yeah, I, I've thought about that sometimes. And uh, um, at the moment, we don't have one, though. We still have a system that's a, a dominant threat. And uh, so, um, yeah, I think we should should do some study about what, what to do about that. I, everybody prefers to find local solutions, but we have this global problem that's, that's threatening everyone. Um, and uh, yeah, I've, my, my approach for many years has been to uh, understand how growth transforms natural systems. And it basically, it's a um, two or three stage process, depending on how you look at the first of, of explosive innovation, and then uh, a long period of, of uh, uh, slow coordination. Uh, yeah, as, as we do in our own lives, we take nine months in the womb to go from one to a trillion cells and, or more, take 20 years uh, to learn how to get along. And so it's that learn how to get along period, the growing up period that we've left out of our economic plan. And, uh, uh, and na nature has lots and lots of examples. So Yeah, Jesse, I think, uh, well, I've, I've been involved in these processes at the global level for close to 40 years. Um, I, was, I was a negotiator in the COPS. I was in the advisory council for the UNESCO Man Advisory Program. I was a vice chair for the World Commission on Protected Area, blah, 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 blah. I don't think the solutions will come from the global. Uh, we just need to do a lot of local solutions where you actually are solving the problems and then scale them up. So let's dream big, start small and scale rapidly. Uh, and that is what this is about. We need to co-create solutions. I, I know a lot of people are, are betting on the SDGs. Um, 
I really don't believe in them. I'm sorry to say this so bluntly. Um, I was in a CNN interview the day they were being approved. When I said this, all my friends for the UN uh, said, you're, you're boycotting the best initiative the UN system has had. If we look back in 1987, we're in, I think, Article 90 of the uh, Brundtland uh, report, our coming future. Yeah, we're going to leave for the next generations the same conditions that we inherited. And we never got there. So we wait another, and that's why I don't go into discussions about definitions. You won't catch me discussing if it's regenerative, if it's sustainable, if it's whatever. Uh, I'm not going to go into those discussions. It's a waste of time. We spend too much time defining things and not acting. So we need to act. And if we make mistakes, let's make them together and correct them quickly. So this is a transition process, and we need huge number of good cases that merge into bioregional approaches. When I started uh, the Costa Rica Regenerativa, and this has happened before in other initiatives, I found so many beautiful projects, but they're all looking at their belly button. Now, many of them didn't even impact a lot of the eco villages in the eco village network. They're great, they're 40 years old, but their neighbors have no clue. They're just, oh no, what's going on in your neighbor? No, that's a bunch of hippies and, and they don't interact with us. So we need to move beyond that and, and create this collaborative platform where together we make mistakes, together we find solutions, but we need the capacity. So this is all about that. It's sharing knowledge, it's co-creating new knowledge and putting things into action. And this is what this summit is about, like to collectively make all these connections and collectively being able to gather all these observation and deep listening to, for, to the emerging opportunities that we can really work together. And today I found I, uh, a good point uh, listening to Daniel that uh, we are not just trying to find a market between ourselves, but actually going to transform through the connectivity and the uh, towards bioregioning, which is like a turning, turning us to what it just has been exposed and using all those tools. So I want to give, um, to pass to another question. Um, I will I will pass the the word to Juan Sebastian Killian just because there are people that uh, haven't participated enough uh, during the, uh, the the summit and I want just to give a little bit more of voices. Uh, so forgive me, I will give you the, vo the the voice if we have time at the end. But I think that it is important to pass the word and listen more diverse voices. So please, Juan Sebastian. Thanks. Melina, muchas gracias. Yeah, I want to jump in, but I want to do it um, in Spanish. Regarding, there are also Spanish speakers here. So uh, if, if you agree, you can bring up the general idea then in, in English. So if, if you agree, okay. Uh, Profesor eh, Müller, es un, un gusto poder saludarlo directamente, esta vez lo he escuchado en, en varias ocasiones eh, y me ha encantado siempre que usted llama la atención cuando eh, dice que no podemos permitir que esta, este enfoque regenerativo se, conver, se convierta en una idea fashion. Usted sabe muy bien, creo que usted sabe muy bien que hay una línea muy delgada entre querer regenerar, querer colonizar y querer evangelizar sobre todo en esta psicósfera eh, aún muy influenciada por una educación antropocéntrica, ¿cierto? Eh, ya, lo he, ya se ha hablado aquí en, en general, lo que ha dicho Franz, lo que el mismo Hugo ha dicho, ¿cierto? Todos esos conceptos que debemos redefinir sobre éxito, sobre riqueza, sobre... Ahí hay, una, hay un reto importante y, y precisamente pues un reto de, de este enfoque regenerativo. Yo lo que, la pregunta que le quiero hacer considerando esa línea tan delgada que hay y si lo ubicamos en esa, en esa visión de los tres horizontes y usted lo ponía el ejemplo de la sostenibilidad. Eh, sin pelos en la lengua podemos decir eh, que hoy que la, este proceso del desarrollo sostenible fracasó. 
eh, y no lo podemos eh, ni alarmar, no, no tenemos que alarmarnos por eso, porque bueno, el fracaso es parte también de, de un proceso de la vida. Pero eh, quisiera que, eh, nos de, ¿cuál es su visión si hablamos de otros 30, 40 años en adelante desde esto que estamos definiendo como regeneración? Eh, ¿Será que sí vamos a lograr un cambio? ¿Será que sí, si pasamos de objetivos de desarrollo sostenible a propósitos de desarrollo regenerativo, será que de aquí a los próximos 30 años, estamos hablando 2050, una fecha tan clave, vamos a tener verdaderos cambios o definitivamente lo que hay que hacer es derrumbar la, pues, las instituciones y la educación es parte de esas instituciones que fueron, sobre todo han sido moldeadas por esa visión eh, fragmentada, etc. Usted sabe muy bien so, esta pregunta. So I'll, I'll summarize what uh, Juan Sebastián <laughs> said. Basically, right. Thank it's you very much. All right. how to avoid the hijack of the term regeneration uh, by the, the other world. Um, and if it's possible in 20, 30 years to achieve this state, or do we need to basically let everything collapse and rebuild? Uh, and he mentioned the educational system. We just have to look back in, in history How did our educational system come to be? I mean, during most of the evolution of humanity, there were no schools. People learned with their communities. People learned um, with their peers. Um, the formal educational system was established basically in the Industrial Revolution in England to, to produce people that were able to work in factories. And that hasn't changed uh, a lot. I mean, yes, it's changed, but the, the basic thing is there is a teacher that knows how the students sit in row. We divide them according to age, even if we know children of, of the same age might be totally different and children of different ages might be the same. I don't think age is a good measurement to divide children into uh, grades. And the teacher's standing, the kids are sitting down in straight lines. They have to ask for permission to talk uh, and they get uh, told what they need to learn. And a lot of the soft skills, which are now coming into the educational system, but after a long battle, they're training people that are not really fit for purpose and that are basically workers for the industry. They're either looking for jobs. And what we're seeing now is the young professionals, the young people, not professionals, the young people are not any more interested in going to the H1 jobs. They're looking to be entrepreneurs. They're looking to be different. They're looking to be nomads. Um, they're not willing to go through a big loan in some of the countries uh, and, and learn a profession that is not any more actually fit to solve their current issues. So I think we're already seeing a collapse. I'm not sure, I don't have a glass ball, crystal ball to know how deep we're gonna land. But if you look at the, what's ha happening at the governmental level and, and the political level, I mean, this, this, the polarization of society, Brazil, you know, two halves are mortal enemies in a country which should be, should be united. But the strategies that were followed by the candidates uh, learning from Trump and previous people wanted to split the country just to become come into power. That uh, system is, is failing. That is not anymore democracy. The financial system is failing. The banks are failing. The World Bank is culprit of a lot of the destructions that were, that were done in the third world. The third world, according to the bank. They funded the high, the big, huge electric, uh, uh, hydroelectric dams, which destroyed so many ecosystems. They funded the deforestation of Costa Rica to produce cattle because forests were not uh, productive land. So we see this whole system just collapsing. How far it's gonna collapse, I, I think it will depend on how quick we show that regeneration works. So again, I'm not fighting the system anymore. I used to be an activist. I've, I've sat on the table with Evo and, and with Lula, actually, to discuss uh, gas and oil in Bolivia. 
that is not taking me anywhere. And I, I just quit that part of my life because it was a waste of time. And we were told when we started here with regenerative agriculture, especially during COVID in degraded soils where people were committing suicide because they didn't have what to eat. And that we were told by Academy and by the Ministry of Agriculture, you can't produce food in that degraded soil. Uh, three months later, we had 10 tons of food per hectare grown by communities that didn't have agricultural experience. So now everybody's looking at success of regenerative agriculture and it's starting to become a trend slowly but surely. Uh, cattle, everybody's, you know, we have Christiana Figueres who got the, 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 the Paris Agreement signed. She still says in the press that we need to get rid of all the cattle in Costa Rica and in the world. And actually, when we look into the science that's available, the cattle ecosystem is capable of fixing up to 34 gigatons of carbon a year, of CO2 a year. And we could reverse climate change within two or three decades. But we don't look into this alternative because the establishment says no. The science in the reductionist process says the methane of the cows is so huge. But also you look in and the big emitters, the big culprits like corporate agriculture are there under the radar. So I, th I think this will crumble more, but as we can accelerate regeneration and we show that it works, more and more people will adopt it. And I see so many beautiful initiatives coming together and the able, being able to network them like in this summit and learn from others and, and start working together and giving our knowledge and bringing their knowledge, that's how we're making regenerative agriculture better every day. We're bringing people from all over the world to give their opinions. No, look, I, we practice this. Why don't you try that? And so we can start rebuilding from this. And, and I think education is the same thing. We are trying to reinvent or redesign of the educational process to actually get students and young people wanting to live and wanting to build their future. I don't think we need to learn how to adapt to climate change. Uh, yeah, that, that within the first horizon, it's fundamental. But what we need to do is we need to be able to know how to rebuild a future world, a rebuild of abundance. We can still create, we're still on time to build a better world. So let's do it and forget about learning how to live in collapse. I want to I want to remember everyone because what Edward said um, made me think about what we uh, sent to you everyone registered in the summit uh, this morning, or it was yesterday night, um, uh, about the co digital, which is like a just a uh, platform for radical collaboration uh, on subjects, and we can vote on that. So that's what we are doing now. So we, I, I just want to remember our code for this summit and for what is going on in the present moment, which is activate metamorphic present collaboration, which is what it is happening. So use the platform we have put together uh, during the summit and the map and everything. So we can just start this process right now. Clement, please come into the scene. Thank you, thank you. Uh, thank you for letting me um, yes, um, I mean, uh, I would just wanted to share, um, it's quite a phenomenon to see that the diversity of everybody that is coming onto this call to regenerate our world. And um, I, honestly, when I joined this summit um, and also joining all the regenerative training from UCI, the world was scaring me. <laughs> it was scaring me because every day I hear something is collapsing, something is dying, our world is going to an end, and it's scary. But one thing that gives me hope is to see that all over the world, someone somewhere is doing something in their own small way to bring all this, this together. And that gives me hope. That gives me a lot of hope. Of, uh, over this week of all the summits and the difference of people, it gives me a lot of hope. And I, I can say that, and one of the things that uh, I think Edward mentioned in our first lesson that I, I kind of fell in love with it is that 
as you said, um, we build the new to make the old obsolete. And I think that I appreciate that. And to be able to be in the position to use seats way back in Africa uh, to enroll students in UCI who will never have been able to get the opportunity to be sponsored to do a higher education, that alone gives me the hope that there are possibilities um, going forward. And in as much as the systems may not be perfect, but at least if one person or even myself comes out and is able to train others in building regenerative uh, thinking back in Ghana, I'm sure that together we are going to create the world we all dream of. So I appreciate everyone. And I think it's beautiful to see these connections happening. Thank you. Hi, Clement. You, Clement. Wow. Wow. Good. Thank you for bringing us this beautiful light energy. Um, yeah, I would like to know if Dora, would you like to, to, to put your, your question aloud, please? You have been uh, putting some information there about uh, little children. Yeah, like sure. To... Yeah, thanks. <laughs> thanks. It's just almost midnight, so I'm not sure if I can really <laughs> get my thoughts across clearly enough. But yeah, so I just I just love what you are talking about, and and that's pretty much the direction I'm taking. Um, I'm talking as a as a mother first and foremost, and as a member of a parent association uh, in the local school where my kids are grow, uh, going and uh, I'm also trying to establish uh, kind of a, a work that disrupts the educational system as is like for example the ideas that I have is I don't want to teach kids I don't want them to learn about uh, you know permaculture principles I don't want them to learn about these things I want them to live them right so building out the educational system in a way that allows them to grow up with those. Uh, and that's what I'm kind of looking for, like other people, other, other areas, other institutions that have established something along these lines. So I could reach out and, you know, network. Um, and, and I don't want to feel, you know, uh, powerless being just a speck in the in the whole big system um i'm i'm really into activism in the way of going after the the ministry going after the the local council going after the the parents themselves really and, and establishing a kind of uh, way of working and and raising our kids that gives them these skills you know what edward was talking about building this new future I don't want them to learn it from books, right? I want them to live it through. So if you have anything, let me know. <laughs> Thank you. Excellent, that's the way forward. Anybody yeah, else? Thank you, Dora. Yeah. Kilian, Kilian just had a raised hand before. What can we, yeah, please Kilian. Yeah, so, um, everything sounds great. Um, you guys went really fast on stuff, so it's hard to know exactly. There's, there might be questions, but I don't know. I need to really study everything you guys presented. But two things did catch my ear um, about the financial, the finances. Well, one thing caught me, and one thing is a, is a question. Uh, I wonder. Um, as far as I know, I can't. I haven't been able to find any mechanism by which you can have any kind of ownership or profit or or businesses, that kind of thing, at the end point where the world is regenerative. In other words, we need to go to commons. You know, you could call it nested commons or what have you, but I think, as far as I can understand so far, we must end up in commons. So one question is, do you see this system, this financial system that you're creating and this uh, everything as being a transition thing that we, that we used to get from where we are to regenerative and then we don't need it anymore? Or do you see it as an end point that we still use it then? And the other question is, um, I saw something in there that said uh, non-inflationary, and that surprised me too, 
Because if a system has any kind of ownership or that kind of thing, I can't see how it would be non-inflationary. So if you could address those two things, if it's too much to address quickly, then that's fine. Maybe we can talk about it another time or what have you. Thank you. Sure, thanks, Killian. I can quickly speak to that. And there's definitely probably way more to uncover than we have time, but I can tell you from my perspective at least, and maybe then Ugo and Edward can complement if, if they see fit. But yeah, I think you know what you're mentioning, the aspect of commons is fundamental. That's also what we're moving towards to really seeing this as a, essentially knowledge or wisdom as something that is stewarded by humanity itself. And we can create economical models that reflect that sort of mimicking nature. Um, in terms of uh, the, the non-inflationary concept, what we have is essentially creating a, a mechanism that is intrinsically stable. So what we're doing with the seeds layer is, for example, a non-inflationary currency where we're measuring the supply or the demand of currency within the economy and creating as much currency as there is demand for exchange based on regeneration. So it's really designed to be a non-inflationary currency across time. And to your first part of our question, you know, our whole design is to essentially create a currency where, or a form of exchange where at some point uh, that is no longer relevant. So it's really a place to take us away from our current overthinking where everything right now is financial capital. We won't even, we've commoditized everything that we need a way out and we need to find a way to meet people where they are and slowly start bringing that consciousness, that awareness, that at some point where that consciousness is built, when that awareness is there, then at some point, this currency, these tokens are no, no longer necessary. But what we're really driving towards is the evolution of, of consciousness, the raising of awareness that essentially creates uh, systems based on scarcity on obsolete. Yeah, quick question. Are your are your links in the chat? Um, not sure. I can for sure add some more. Thank you. Kilian, uh, I would like also to answer you from a, from a biomimicry perspective, which is uh, what I've been trying to understand for these many years is how an ecosystem works, how mycelium works, how neural networks works. And most of them, they are really relying into the energy exchanges. And, and there is a lot on, on, the, on the presentation that Melina and Thompson did for this specifically event on how does nature collaborate. So I think what you are presenting as, as a possible future is a way that how to go from, from what we have uh, till there. But when we think uh, in nature, we are already there. What is a kind of fantasy, it is the, the way that we put economics. Because somehow we have said that the roots of the economics, they were just our own and not, not linked with the context. So I think it's more about energy exchanges than just thinking about commons and how to optimize the energy flows on the system. So if we think more about the earth as a metabolic being and we understand the metabolism, then we, we can start to, to self-regulate these energy exchanges that are healthier for the a, for a whole uh, planet. And we can cluster them, whether it's bioregions but also ecosystems, micro ecosystems. There are many patches in different layers that could work like this, but I think the challenge of being uh, conscious that we are part of nature is, is one of the first ones to address because we need to understand that, that our rules are not uh, aligned with reality. And that is, uh, that put us in danger as a species. Yeah. Ron, fala, Ron. Sorry. <laughs> Hola, hi, hello everyone. Hello, friends. Um, um, yes, I have been the opportunity to to be an ambassador with with seeds have been a great experience and excites me to know that this uh, that you are focused in this by this um, overview by by seeing what the regions will need in. in in educational part layer, you know, because uh, I think that each of the regions has to to create a working group to see locally what they need. But uh, a global weaving way to 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 has a, my experience was with seeds 
can bring a lot of uh, in uh, incentives to, to people locally, see them themselves as a bioregional uh, organization, you know. Uh, I have been doing this experience in my where I live, and we ha have not uh, legislated by the governmental, but uh, with the work that we have been done, uh, we have been asked for help by the governmental uh, culture, cultural place, you know. And I'll start with things that I, I have uh, learned with seeds by mapping and and then uh, creating working groups, work with uh, allocracy, sociocracy, and creating this uh, uh, purpose for, for us to, to move through cycles, you know, to nat natural, nat uh, to be with the moon cycles and, and, and feelings together, the things and, and weaving together with creating some events. And yeah, I have uh, also the, I want to so much to, to have uh, the methodology, the methodology of the rain system of the, what she, she brought with seeds leadership. It was amazing for, I think, to also have a, a um, yeah, for, for people to, you know, actually what I, I try to say that it, we have to locally have these working groups. It's not, not uh, um, you know what? Let me find a word, sorry. Fala em português e eu traduzo. Tá. É, é que não é suficiente. Uh, enough, right? It's not enough. It's not enough, not yes. enough for, 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 for us to, to, to move ourselves uh, locally. We have to create some support for, for you know, have the, to look for ourselves through other eyes, for, for uh, other places' eyes, you know, and this web of support may be crucial for, for stabilize this uh, collaborative way to, to work locally. And I find also want to leave, sorry to take it too much long, but I also want to leave this platform of Bioregen Summit. Uh, I was talking with Ben to, to create something for my own Bioregional place because we are just using uh, WhatsApp, or groups of work, WhatsApp and, and so, and Zoom, and it's that what people can catch, you know, firstly, and, and start to 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 working together. But yeah, I would create some link here that's more by created by the organizational uh, part of people that want to help locally. And we are working and I share here from Umia. And yeah, I'll pass it. Thank you. So we still have a few minutes before we wrap up. We, we also have a hangout session with me. I think it's in the same room. So if yes, anybody wants is. to stay on, um, you have more some more time there. But I don't know if you want to know a bit more about the, the educational platform. The idea is to have a, a big set of different courses, different styles, and you start building your own pathway we hope to get artificial intelligence behind this. The platform is set up in a language and a platform that allows for AI support that then it will can, based on, the, on your profile, on your hive uh, and what your needs are, what your offerings are, what your process, educational process is, where you're working, what projects you have, that it, you can actually help you design the learning path. But that will be on the medium term. In the short term, we'll be doing this manually, but we do hope that uh, people interested in learning regeneration can choose their own pathway depending on what area of regeneration they want to work with, they want to focus on, uh, including all the other areas. Sean, do you, you raise your hand? Yes, um, I had a question uh, just overall um, of what are the needs that that you have 
as as a project of of you know how you know and then also how people like me or anyone who would want to get involved like is there an onboarding kind of yeah we, and yeah, opportunities? We, yeah we're still working on that the idea is we'll launch the the hive where you, where you, where you actually can then fill in your, your information and you'll be already part of the network and then we we will have a vetting process so people that want to upload courses or universities from other parts of the world want to upload their courses there will be a mechanism in, in, that involves even uh, a portion of the payment to go to the author uh to the platform and whatever uh so we do hope to have a lot of collaboration we don't have it up yet but that you saw the 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 beta version that's running we should be opening this up uh, over the next uh, few weeks maybe a couple of months and then we do hope to start onboarding people but with through the rcn network uh, linked to the summit you can also then stay in touch and we do hope that very soon we have uh this open and i'm sure it's going to be transformative i mean uh in in clement's group i can't remember who presented but we have students in a certificate in regenerative entrepreneurship around the world and one of the students his final project to achieve the certificate is developing a food forest in his home village so he's reducing the temperature of the village and offering free food to everybody transforming the whole village into a food forest i mean these are initiatives that can really sprout change around the world and you have 10 or 20 of these young people doing similar projects, they can exchange knowledge and then you can bring in mentors and we can actually generate such positive synergy in the process that we reshape education and we mix mentors. You're, you're not anymore, there's not any more difference between a mentor and a student or a professor and a student or a PhD and, and a student. Uh, we're all in the co-creation process. We're all in the learning process in my life i've learned that a farmer or an indigenous person who never went to school can actually teach me more than a phd professor in a, in a famous university so i think we all have something to say we just have to start exchanging this knowledge as quickly as possible and really putting the accelerator on to create a whole bunch of first responders to regeneration that's what we're calling them people that can go and start working on regeneration today you know, they don't have to go through a six year university program to then start learning how to apply this. No, we have to go now. Yeah, thank you, Shant. I, I think um, right now we are looking how to integrate uh, specifically seeds and, and, and seven vortex with the hive. So we're looking for investment to to go and to scale up this idea from the beta to to really making it more user friendly and, and to co-create the marketplace. This is what we are and this is why we're trying to um, co-create it with seeds because we think that that is a nice alternative for a, a smart contracts uh, focusing on, on the intention that they are bringing regenerative money and not just the technology. Yeah, I want to. Have, have you thought about uh, what parts of cultures in the world will most readily adapt to uh, this approach and which will least? Um, is there any place where you expect it to take off? Uh, okay, our, the focus of the university has been mainly Latin America, but we have students in over 65 countries. Um, so we're, we're learning in the process. Um, but it's open to any cultures. And my experience is that if it's a dynamic platform and you can engage one-to-one -one with different people around and start discussing things uh, without the formality of an institutionalized process, uh, a lot of people will benefit. And I remember many, many years ago, uh, I, I started a program, a global program for, was, the global partnership for professionalizing protected area management so working with national parks and protected areas the profession didn't exist uh, they hired biologists to run a protected area that didn't know anything about community development or about business models or about managing the staff 
So we created a, a platform and we always have the critics. And I remember so many critics telling me, yeah, but you won't get to the park ranges because they don't have internet in the field. And I said, yeah, right now they won't. In 10 years they will, but let's not worry of not launching a program because we won't get to those park ranges that are out in the field without internet. If we can get their bosses who are in the cities who understand this, they will give it on to those that don't have the connection. So I think this is a gradient again. We can start building, and even if we don't get 100% of the population we should be getting, if we get 30% of it in three years, it'll be another 50, and then we start growing and learning in the process. So I think it's a transition, and we cannot expect to be perfect. I prefer to launch something that works, even if it doesn't work 100%. I don't care about the critics. If it's constructive criticism, well, it's built on it. If it's just negative criticism, I don't even pay attention. And we just start building from there and learning of our, from our mistakes. So I think we can start building up a momentum, even if we don't reach everybody. But in 100 years, I hope people will look back and say, well, these guys did it. Thank you. That was awesome. Uh, we are just the time. Uh, so I just want to be aware of that. We will be following uh, by a hangout. So the, this conversation can keep going. I just want to acknowledge uh, the time we scheduled this meeting. And uh, I want to invite everyone who wants to stay. Uh, we will have Edward here for another hour and think and a half in the same room here. So I will just stop the recording so we can pass to another another part of the conversation a little bit more relaxed and so on. So 